So, are the Leafs an exciting high-octane offense team, or are they a boring defensive team now? Oh yeah, no, for sure. That wasn't a yes or no question. Yeah, no, but it was. How many games are left? 52, like Marinchin. Ah, don't say his name out loud. Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. Ah, I don't script these. Are the Leafs alright? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Leafs lose 3-1 to the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> Listen, I make a video after every single Leafs game. I've made over 2,000 of these, and I have gotten to cover some amazing stories. Talk about some amazing stories in some games. From start to finish, all oh, you could write a book, a harrowing history of hubris and heartbreak, a perfect poem of passion and perseverance. And this was, ah, the Leafs didn't shoot. They didn't feel like it. And while this wasn't a home opener with nine goals and an overtime winner after months apart, Every game has a story, and too many people called this boring. Maybe it was less exciting than other games, but every game has a story, so let's talk about this one. The Leafs' first two games against Montreal and Ottawa, a sloppy mess. Coming away with the win against Montreal, and obviously losing to Ottawa embarrassingly. The next two games were far more defensive affairs, in which the Leafs were the far better team in the second half of the back-to-back -back against Ottawa, and then dominating the Winnipeg Jets. In this one against Edmonton, with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreis, title coming to town, the first period was more of the same. The Leafs didn't really do anything wrong. They outshot the Oilers 8-3. to I was looking at the Leafs' first period, struggling to figure out what I would do differently. What I would demand of the team. What I would want them to go at the second period with. My main piece of feedback would be, be luckier. And we've already spoken about making your own luck this season. The good teams always seem to be lucky. But is that what happened on this first goal? The only goal of the first period for the Edmonton Oilers. So here's what we got. We got Dominic Cahoon for the Oilers fighting behind the net. But he's got two Leafs on him. Yamamoto in support, but all five Leaf skaters are there. Grant Granted, they're all puck watching. Yamamoto gets in there, he manages to squirt the puck into the slot, but not to an open teammate right onto the stick of Jimmy VC, who plays for the Leafs. VC receives the puck on his backhand, and if he keeps it there, he can just swat it into the corner. Now, the Oilers might get the puck back, and then who knows what happens, but I do know this, he wouldn't have swatted it into the slot and off his own defenseman. But maybe the reason the VC panicked there is Leon Dreisaitl is barreling down on him, taking away time and space, just like Nylander did a few games ago, and I was talking about that. And ironically, it was Jimmy VC who scored that goal. Do you remember? William Nylander in the corner, taking away time and space from Jonathan Drouin. Drouin puts it off the ref. Too bad, so sad. Nylander gets it, gives it to VC, and it's a goal. So while this is kind of unlucky, let's be honest, VC didn't mean to do that. Muzzin didn't mean to knock it into his own net. The Leafs still find a way to create their own bad luck. Or, at very least, give the Oilers credit, they found a way to create their own good luck. And overall, yeah, the Leafs have a good period. I mean, they held Edmonton to three shots. That's nothing. But they say hockey is a game of mistakes, and VC definitely made one on this play, but it's also a game of moments. The Oilers didn't have a good period. They didn't. But they had a good moment here. We don't remember the Leafs game four against Columbus because they had a good game. They didn't. But they did have a good three minutes, and that was enough. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Bad teams are easy to watch. The Leafs aren't a bad team, they're a frustrating one. They'll play a good 59 minutes and 55 seconds, but 5 seconds ruins it. But a frustrating team becomes a bad one pretty quick. Was that a lot of words for a puck that ultimately just went off a defenseman's skate? Maybe, but if you want to have any success in the regular season, forget about the playoffs. We'll, we'll cross that bridge if we earn that bridge. If you want to have any success at some point, you're going to be like, eh, you know what, a lot of bounces go against us. Why? And so we go to intermission. Weird period for the Leafs. They outshoot the Oilers 12 to 8. That's good. It didn't really feel like anything was dangerous until the final five minutes, though. The first part of that period. <laughs> Ilya Mikheyev looking really good on the penalty kill. Uh, wish he didn't have to kill penalties. We'll talk about the Muzzin one that ultimately cost the Leafs the game in the end, but a lot of people were talking about Mitch Marner versus Darnell Nurse and the difference between the two penalties. Nurse giving Marner basically, like any of you guys watch WCW, he basically gave Marner the scorpion death drop into the crossbar. This is what Nurse did to Marner. Come on, man. Like, what even is that? All right, you saw that. Now here is Marner getting his revenge on Nurse. And here's what Marner did. Mitchell, come on. This isn't the UFC there, buddy. That's how a kid tugs on their parents' sleeve to get their attention. Can I have some apple juice? I've talked about this before. It doesn't matter how small it is. If it affects possession, then they're going to call it. Nurse still had the puck here. He didn't lose the puck, but did Marner slow him down? There's certainly an argument there, and I, I think this is the problem, guys. That penalty's legit. 
I, I think it's soft, but it's legit. The problem to me is that the punishment for what Marner did and for what Nurse did are the exact same, and that's ridiculous. We do have minor penalties and we do have major penalties, but the fact that those things are viewed as the exact same seems silly. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The Leafs killed it off in large part due to Ilya Mikheyev being amazing, but we'll have to talk about him later as well. We head to the third period for crying out loud, the Leafs need a goal! and they get one. Zach Cassian, in his own corner, has the puck until he doesn't. Austin Matthews steals the puck, has this sliver of daylight to shoot at. Like, look at this, look at this. That is what Miko Koskinen gave Austin Matthews to shoot at. And he took it, and he tied it. That is the sort of thing a special player can do. The Leafs tie the game. Until, not long after, Jake Muzzin called for the trip on Dominic Cahoon. Now, on the broadcast, they said it looked like Yamamoto's stick got between Cahoon's legs and resulted me calling it a phantom call, a brutal call. And this morning, a lot of Leaf Nation still freaking out about it. But then an Oilers fan named McNudes for Life pointed out, no, it was legit. People kept sending me stills, and th that's not good enough. I, I know I literally just did that for Marner and Nurse, but in this case, it's just not good enough. Was Yamamoto stick between Cahoon's legs? I still can't really tell. Did Cahoon go down real easy? I still think so, but Muzzin did kind of slash or trip Cahoon right above the knee, causing him to go down. Maybe the reason it looked like Cahoon went down easy is because he was already on just one foot. Muzzin gets the stick on the leg that's up, causes him to flip. Not to mention, let's give the official some credit. We have the luxury of looking at it a thousand times in slow motion. The official is standing right there. Guys, that's not even the worst penalty call of the game, so you gotta give it to him, and now you gotta kill it with one of your key penalty killers in the box. And the Leafs are actually doing a pretty good job. There's less than 30 seconds to go in this power play. The Oilers' power play has not looked good all night. They might actually do this. And then sure enough, it's another fortunate bounce for the Oilers off a of skate. Ryan Nugent Hopkins with the puck looked like he tried to shoot it, but it it goes off Jesse Puyi-RV skate. It goes to a wide open Leon Dreisaitl and from that close he's probably not gonna miss. Buries it. 2-1 Oilers. That ends up being the game winning goal. That's the kind of game this was. Leafs take three penalties all night. That's not a terribly undisciplined game. The penalty kill looks pretty good overall and then a fortunate bounce for the Oilers. What I have a far bigger problem with, and it sounded like Sheldon Keefe did too after the game, is the Leafs were outshot 11-6 in the third period of a game that they were losing most of the time. Josh Archibald empty netter. Like, how many seconds was Freddie even out of the net when that went in? And that's the end of the game, so now what are the Leafs? Because the good news is that's three straight games now where they've looked good defensively. Like two relatively fluky goals in this one and then the empty netter. And then pretty good performance against the Jets. Good performance on the second half against Ottawa. It's kind of feeling like the Leafs are sacrificing some of their offense to get better defensively. And Freddie still looks pretty sharp. I saw some people referring to his save percentage from like a single game. Like numbers are good. They're good. But we watched the same game. Don't show me those numbers when you know full well Jimmy VC fired the puck off his own defenseman and it beat Freddie. Beat Freddy. It went in. General rule of thumb, if the last two people to touch the puck were on the goalie's team, it's not the goalie's fault! Questions. Well, we start with not a question, but an injury update. Sheldon Keefe on Joe Thornton. It looks like he's definitely going to miss some time. Yeah, that didn't look good. Uh, Thornton going off in some pain and pretty much right away. I don't want to speculate. I'm not a doctor. I'm sure we'll have an answer probably by the time I even post this video on what is up with Thornton. But now all of a sudden the Leafs have a problem on the left wing. Nick Robertson already out and Joe Thornton out. You can put Nylander there but you're taking him off the right. You can put Hyman there but you're taking him off the right. Pierre Engvall is an option but this guy has struggled so mightily to score. They need offense. So the best option to me appears to be to take Hyman off of that third line and throw him back on the first line with Austin and Mitch. Built-in chemistry. We know he can do it. it it makes perfect sense. And I like what people have suggested. The 11-7 thing, I, I don't actually think has been that bad. I, I do want to see a 12-6 and six setup for this. Have Barabanov, fourth line, left wing, and maybe give Travis Boyd a shot, either fourth line, right wing, or 
Wayne Simmons up there. Big fan of Wayne Simmons, big fan. But I actually really like what Sheldon Keefe has done with this third line. They're, they're meant to be fast on the puck. I feel like Boyd would fit that decently. Do you think the Oilers saw your North Division picks and that was the reason they won? I was starting to think the Oilers were bad because I picked them to win the North Division and then of course they beat the Leafs. This is torture! Should teams be allowed to challenge a penalty call, lose a timeout, and take a delay of game if they're wrong? Feels like we need some way to prevent the calls like the Muzzin trip from happening. Here's the problem, man. I've watched that play like at least 50 times this morning. I think if you review that, it's called a trip anyway. Listen, a few years ago, I wanted more reviews, the offside reviews and all that, and let me tell you now, in 2021, what hockey does not need is more reviews. Now, what if the call was wrong, and it's late in the game, and it leads to the game winner? Here's what I want. I don't want a coach's challenge, because then that puts pressure on Dave Tippett or Sheldon Keefe. I want the official to have the option to review. Because you always see the refs go, why are you asking that? Okay, it's okay to ask them. They saw it at ice level, but you know who also saw it was the TV! Being a ref is hard. It's a tough job, and we already know they're unsure about a lot of the calls they make. I think they should have the option to say, you know what? I don't know. Maybe you put some limitations on it, like in the regular season you can only do it X amount of times, or you can only do it in the final five minutes of the third, something like that. But if you leave it up to the referee to review it, it's all on them, which I think is the way it should be. That way, no matter what, the call is 100% theirs. They made the call on the ice, they made the call to review it, they made the call on the video, or they made the call not to review it, it's all on them. Did anyone stand out to you tonight? I thought Mikheyev looked really good. Yeah, Ilya Mikheyev. Here's the problem with Mikheyev. He's got the zoomies. Well, that's, that's not the problem, that's the good stuff. He's real fast. The problem is he's Kasperi Kapanen with an alarm clock. Cappy was an amazing penalty killer, and I think Mikheyev is an amazing penalty killer, and roughly along the same vein. Here's the thing, Kapanen was a bigger offensive threat than Ilya Mikheyev. He was. Kapanen was a frustrating offensive player at 5-on-5, five five, but he was a constant scoring threat on the penalty kill. Here's the problem, Soup was not great at shooting the puck, before the wrist injury. If he was a more legitimate offensive threat, I would have no problem go, oh, to throw Mikheyev up with Matthews and Marner. I just can't do that. He, he doesn't have it yet. He, he could develop it. Like, he's obviously a fast player, a smart player, a, a defensively responsible player. He's got to be more of an offensive threat, though, to really take that next step. How do you feel about VC so far? So, this is why you put Zach Hyman up on first line left wing, in my opinion. Thornton's hurt, Robertson's hurt. All right, now who's your biggest offensive threat on the left wing? Is it Mikheyev? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Is it Barabanov? Well, no, he's only played like three minutes in a Leaf uniform. I um, mean, it's not Engvall, uh, so we're up to, okay, yeah, Jimmy VC. It's Jimmy VC. Yeah, he made the mistake in this one, and I feel like that's why some people are asking this question. It's funny, when I watch VC, I'm like, you know what, I like him. I like this player. I don't know if I, with Nylander and Tavares, like this player. Leafs are actually kind of thin on the left wing. They're, they're missing Andreas Janssen, let's be honest. Here's what I'd say. Give VC a chance. It's five games into the season, and I, I don't think he's the problem. It's too weird of a season. There was no exhibition games. Uh, VC was on Buffalo, so th these games with the Leafs are his first in 10 months. It's not making an excuse for him. It's saying, it, give him a sec. I think it's too early in the season to be finagling with the lines like that, unless there's an injury. Okay, okay, I know it's not the most important thing, but it's making me crazy. When you film, are you sitting on an exercise ball, or do you just bounce like that? You want the truth? It's a bouncy ball! Because adulthood. I've shot while sitting on a bouncy ball for well over half a decade, years and years. I don't remember the last time I shot a video not on a bouncy ball or standing. Sitting in a chair for a video, Ugh. That doesn't make any sense to me. Now that I'll let you in on that secret, I'll end with this secret. Uh, Rogers is hiring. That's right, Rogers Sports and Media is doing a hiring blitz. Uh, there's like a hundred positions available, something like that. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in any of these positions. Uh, it's around the country. Uh, let's be co-workers there folks so that is it for this one thank you very much for watching click like if you like this video click subscribe if you really liked it tell all your friends i hope jumbo gets better soon and we'll have to see what the leafs decide